scripture reading for this night comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. The Gospel of Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. This is the Gospel. Hear this, the reading for this night of Christmas Eve. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor in Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house of the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn, her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. This is the Word of God for the people of God, and we say together, thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we come to worship your Son and to thank you so much for his birth and him coming into the world. May now, through word and song and sacrament, May we connect with Him in a very wonderful and real way. ...of your Son, the Christ child born. Amen. Now, t tonight's the night. Uh, tonight, and especially tomorrow when Christmas Day arrives on a Sunday, the first time in many years, and from what I understand it won't happen again this way for 11 years, uh, Advent has concluded. The waiting is over. Mary has given birth. The baby is here. His name is Jesus, also known as Emmanuel, God with us. The statement has been made and is made that a baby changes everything. And it makes a great theological statement about the reality of this night and the power made manifest in the birth of a baby in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. This picture, yes. The first Christmas we celebrated with Kaylee, our daughter, all of six months old, a dear friend gave us this decoration. A baby changes everything. Our daughter is now five, roaring, and I mean roaring with great speed into being a teenager. In fact, the first and other times since she has announced to me and her mother that she was indeed already a teenager. I tell people this story and the common reply is, well, I will pray for you and your wife. I'm sorry, but this is not encouragement. You know, it's not encouragement to tell us that. It's, you know, tell us what we need to do to slow things down. Such a story reminds me all too well how everything has changed. In my circle of friends, Tammy is known as James's wife. And in Tammy's circle of friends, I'm known as Tammy's husband. Five years ago, no more, we are now exclusively known as Kate, Mom, and a baby changes everything. A car seat is still a feature of the cars Tammy and I drive, and I am amazed, just amazed, at how well a car seat can protect a child but also amazed how daggone difficult they are to set and secure in a car as well. I've learned more about mechanics and physics in trying to put a car seat in a car than I ever did from a college class. A baby changes things. Kaylee is in kindergarten. She is learning, reading, drawing, writing, and two big things this fall. Patterns, or as Kaylee calls them, patterns, and rhyming. 
in the car going somewhere, she'll pop out a rhyme. She'll go cat and hat, ball and tall. And then she'll say something like wrinkle and prinkle. That rhymes, Daddy. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. You know, but for the life of me, I do not know what a prinkle is. My wife and I live in a perpetual state of blessed exhaustion. But we would not trade all the moments with her for all the riches that the world could offer. There are few sounds as dear and as wonderful as Kaylee saying, Mommy, Daddy. She's Mama's baby and Daddy's girl. A baby. Kaylee has changed us. And so it is tonight we come to remember, experience, and recognize how a baby has changed everything. Tonight is about the baby Jesus changes it all, all situations, all circumstance for anyone who believes. He changes darkness into light. It is no more. Darkness is no more. He changes brokenness for we can be forgiven and whole. He changes sin. It no longer controls things. Jesus has paid the price that is necessary. He changes disease and sickness. Healing, complete healing is possible. He changes weakness because in Jesus we are strong. He changes death for death is defeated and in Jesus there is resurrection. He changes life for in Jesus the greatest meaning to all of life is found. When we come to Luke's gospel and we hear of what he says about the birth of Jesus, we come to understand that Jesus is God's revelation to the whole world. It is God's most complete and profound way of saying to you and to me, I love you. I really do, God says. Christmas teaches us God came from heaven as us to be with us, to show us the way to live and to love. So as for us to all know, to believe and to live. The baby born tonight will change our life, yours and mine. Will change and the now, the days ahead, the rest of this life, and have influence on the life to come, eternity. What God has done, is doing, and will do, the baby born in Bethlehem is the invitation to life, life now, life new, life wonderful, and life blessed. But we do have to accept it. You and I, for all this to take place, we have to accept. We have to believe. During this time of year, a common scene comes to mind of the nativity. And as it is a scene that is very much associated with this time of year, I think it's safe to say that we all struggle a bit to see the nativity with a fresh set of eyes. But a few thoughts that do carry us through this night. Uh, Jesus was born into history. A decree was issued by Caesar Augustus, issued that a census would be taken of the entire Roman world. Jesus was in a particular context, part of a place and a time in history. And Jesus is mentioned not only in the New Testament, but in other contemporaries and early documents from folks like Josephus and Pliny and Tacitus and many others. Scripture places Jesus within history as a man who lived and died and rose in real time. A person who was permanently altered 
who permanently altered the history into which he was born. Jesus was born in David's birthplace. Israel's greatest king, David, was born in Bethlehem. God had promised to David through the prophet Samuel, Your house and your kingdom will endure forever. Your throne will be established forever. The children of Israel, the Jews, eagerly await, expected David's successor and called this hope for the Messiah. They called him the son of David. And Jesus is the son of David, the promised king. 700 years the people of Israel waited, hoped, and looked. And part of what it means to say Jesus is born in Bethlehem is to say that the waiting is over. Messiah is here. God with us. God in the flesh. With us. With us. God with us. Jesus born. No room in the inn. The Holy Son of God was born in a stable or a cave where animals were kept and His first crib was a common cattle trough. Carlos A. Rodriguez said, It was an unwed mother an unwed woman who carried God. It was the pagans from the east who recognized God. It was the workers in the field who heard from God. It was the marginalized neighbor who welcomed God. It was God who chooses the lowly and the broken to rise. Christmas is here. Let hope in. There is a message here. Scripture says that though Jesus was by very nature God, says that in Philippians, He emptied Himself of all the privilege to which He was heir. He just didn't take a lowly place. He took the lowliest of places. If we begin reading Luke's story in chapter 2, we will see clearly that Rome controls everything. The angel Gabriel comes and talks to a young Jewish woman who is courageous enough Think about this now. Courageous enough to talk back to an angel and accept an untimely pregnancy. Mary's acceptance is key to how God is in this this project, this, this turn the world upside down effort to bring down the powerful from their thrones, to raise up the oppressed, to feed the hungry with the good things of creation, to help the Jewish people to come and remember the promises made all the way back to the days of Abraham. Caesar issued an order, but God was keeping His promises. Something interesting happens when Jesus is born. An angel appears to the shepherds in the fields guarding their flocks, and an angel says that a baby is born to you. Luke is the only synoptic evangelist to ascribe the title Savior to Jesus. The promise in the angel's announcement of Jesus, the Savior, is a declaration that God's kingdom has come to earth. Christmas Day, which is tomorrow, is a time to announce God's kingdom that is embodied in Jesus. Jesus is the answer to our prayer for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that almost every Sunday in the Lord's Prayer. God's kingdom to come to earth. In Bethlehem, we see Jesus God in the flesh. In Galilee, we later see Jesus inaugurating God's reign. In Jerusalem, we see Christ crucified and raised to give all the peoples of the world the gift of reconciliation to one another and to the world and God. 
And at Pentecost, the exalted Messiah, the risen Christ, empowers mortals to be apostolic witnesses. The first coming reminds us of the second coming and the close of the end of the age. So I would urge us all to hold fast to the meaning of this night. Let us remember what Christmas and especially this night is all about. We live and grow into hope, joy, peace, and love. Christmas is but a beginning. The baby born tonight will change our lives, will change our here and now. All the days ahead, the rest of this life, and make possible the next life, eternity. There is a litany called The Work of Christmas, composed by Howard Thurman, an African-American theologian, educator, and civil rights leader. And it's so appropriate for this night. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. A baby born in Bethlehem. A baby born in Bethlehem. His name is Jesus. He is the Savior of us all. King of kings. Lord of lords. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Peace to all. Peace to all on earth. A baby changes everything. Let us pray. Holy God, merciful God, help us, guide us, teach us to know the reality, the truth of this night. That you have changed all of life in your coming in your Son Jesus. Be with us this night that we would receive Him fully, wonderfully. And it's in His name we pray.